interesting few weeks, especially in July. I seem to have spent most of July with a severe uh, back pain that just <laughs> was so prevalent it wouldn't go away. And no matter what I did, no matter how much I, I prayed or I tried to exercise it or I tried to relax it or I tried to rest it or I tried to take care of it, it just wouldn't go away. There was no relief in sight and I just kept going, you know, and when it began to become obvious that it was going to heal, it was like, ah, oh, thank God. Because if you've ever had persistent pain on a consistent basis, then the relief part is just so overwhelming. You have this unbelievable energy and joy that comes in like a flood. And I think once I started to feel that, that scripture that you hear a lot of where it says, His mercy endures forever. You know, there's there's one psalm, I think, that over and over and over again, almost like a refrain to a song, it keeps saying, His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say, His mercy endures forever. Let the people now say, His mercy endures forever. And it's such a... Until you experience something like that where, where it is His mercy that has caused you or comforts you in some way, you really don't appreciate that song. You really don't understand, you know, the repetition of it is very fitting and very applicable sometimes to our life. Because if it weren't for His mercy, you know, we probably wouldn't be sitting here. <laughs> and I could say for sure, His mercy endures forever. In daily light, his mercy is on them that fear him. How great is thy faithfulness, when thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. If you call on the Father, who without respect of persons judges according to every man's work, Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. The Lord is near unto all them that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desires of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Because thine heart was tender, and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord, and hast rent thy clothes and wept before me, I also have heard you, saith the Lord. To this man will I look even to him that is of a poor and a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. The Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such that be of a contrite spirit. When you become tenderized, when you become sensitized, when you become to the place of being prepared by God to be able to identify those emotions that connect with God, then it's something that should be paid attention to, that we should be consistent in our reaction and action towards others. Because God would have us to be not assertive, but discernible in the way that He would want us and develop us to become. Because it's easy to be someone who can always assert themselves and say, I'm right, I this, I, I, I. But it's a lot harder to be someone who just simply yields to God's will and allows things to progress to the point where God can change those circumstances to cause them to work in favor of the person who trusts in Him. A lot of times we have need of patience that after we have done the will of God, that we would just accept that He will bring about His purpose and design as we watch Him move in the world and change that which we have prayed or asked for. It's not going out and conquering in somebody's name and declaiming and claiming and shaming and naming and doing all these wonderful things that sound so spiritually active. But sometimes it's just a matter of yielding your rights, privileges, and personality to the God Almighty who created the heavens and the universe so that when you trust in him, everyone can say, ah, but look at how he reacted or she reacted 
to the circumstances. They trusted in the Lord and they were not ashamed. Them that honor me, I will honor. Whosoever shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that finds his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. Praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Probably the biggest challenge to our lives isn't really the world. The biggest challenge to our lives really isn't other people. The biggest challenge to our lives is really ourselves. Part of realizing that God is at work both in us and to do of his good pleasure is recognizing that we sometimes hinder that which God is doing by interposing ourselves or getting ourselves in the way when we need to just yield ourselves to his way of doing things. You see, it all really depends on whether you know or whether you think that God is real. Because if you know God is real, then you know he's going to intervene in your life in some personal way today. He's going to reveal himself to you in some intimate way. You know because he's promised he's going to walk with you today. Because he said, the footsteps of a right, the direction of a man's heart is his own, but the footsteps are ordered of the Lord, are chosen by the Lord. So you can decide which way you want to go. But if you're trusting in the Lord today, your footsteps are placed there by God each and every step along the way because he is intimately involved with you. So you can do it the easy way or you can do it the hard way by putting yourself in the way. And I think it's easier to let him have his way than for you to have yours.